Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Chat Sunday. Before we go any further, make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. This week, we are going to be dedicating it to fatherhood. And I'm pleased to be joined by some lovely guests, which you know already. And as stress-free as they look, they do have children. So would you like to introduce yourselves and let us know how many kids you have yeah. and their ages? <laughs> yeah, so um, good to be here again. Um, I'm Leandre, um, the father of one daughter um, who's currently the um, 10 months. Fantastic. And I'm Kwame, the father of one daughter for now, who <laughs> is 10 years old. Fantastic. Well, how are you guys feeling today? Yeah, good. Yeah, good, good, good. 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 Yeah. Had a good. nice Father's Day, been spoiled. Good, so, um, good, no, good. No complaints. <laughs> Glad to hear it. So I will ask this question. What comes to mind when you think of the word fatherhood? I think a few things that come to mind. I think first and foremost is responsibility. Mm. Um, that ultimately you are responsible for another human being in terms of raising them, cultivating them, nurturing them mm. um, alongside another individual. And part of that is also setting that example as well of, of, of what godly living mm. looks like. Because we know, you know children are really impressionable. Mm. So I think understanding that there's a responsibility to kind of be that example um, um, to them is, is what some of the things that come to mind. Mm. Uh, when I think about fatherhood. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, one thing I'd add to that is that fatherhood is a journey as well. So it's it's a journey that you enter mm. and it's not something which just lasts a day or you know a month or a weekend. It's something that's, that's lifelong. Even mm. when the child you know, enters into secondary school, college, university, that responsibility is still there. Even when they enter into marriage, yes. mm. you know, you're, you're still there as a father. It just may be that your, your input isn't so much. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a journey that is probably lifelong. Yeah. And, and with that, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of being a father? I think for me, you know, for Ozzy, it's, it's only been 10 months, but mm. the, the most challenging thing has been presence mm. and making sure that just always acknowledging um, when she's present and being present to her. So we understand that anything I do or, or don't do has mm. an impact on her. Yeah. Um, so Even at all, the age of 10 months. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So it's all about uh, how am I ensuring that I'm giving her the attention um, that that she does that she deserves mm. um, yeah. and our daughter she not being neglected yeah. um, despite the fact that of, of course like she's still very very young but mm. how I'm maintaining that level of presence and actually spending that quality time mm. even from an early age understanding the the ramifications it could have mm. if, if it's not done despite definitely. her being so young definitely what would you say the the most challenging aspects of being a father. Um, I'd say another challenge, because I think there are, there are a number, um, especially when you're a young and upcoming father, um, one challenge is balancing the responsibility of fatherhood with you know, your career aspirations, mm. um, or if you know, want to start a business, or if you're developing a, a singing career, football career, whatever it may be, is just being able to balance that mm. with the responsibility of having a child. Because being a father, is a number one priority yes yeah. um you know when when god made the family and he made adam and eve he didn't make you know he didn't give them a church he didn't mm. give them a business or anything like that the first responsibility god gave to adam was to look after his wife mm. and then after that tr children came mm. so therefore being a husband and being a father is a primary responsibility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before anything else mm -hmm. so just being able to balance that for me i would say was a challenge um it's something that i've come to learn over the years but i'm still not perfect mm -hmm. at it yeah i think it's one of those things that you know as you grow and you develop you get better at it yeah but um it is challenging at first especially when there's so much in your ear yes. about being successful mm -hmm. you know getting to the top of the ladder mm -hmm. in your career which requires you to sometimes stay behind after work do extra hours do extra reading do extra courses that kind of thing mm. how do you make sure as leandre was saying that your presence is felt mm. whilst doing all of that definitely so yeah finding that right balance mm. i would say is a challenge so what advice would you give to to new fathers i know you're 10 months in um but obviously the preparation happens before that but yeah. what advice would you give you know to new fathers um i guess the 
don't know because there's so much if i was going to try mm. and pin it down mm. um um to to one thing in terms of advice i would say you know embrace the mistakes mm. um no one's perfect mm. you are going to get things wrong like kwami said it's a journey um and that and no child's the same Mm. And that's how you how you get better is by spending more time with your child because you begin to understand what they like, what works, what doesn't work. So along with what I was saying earlier about, you know, being present, the other thing I would say is, you know, just to learn from your mistakes and, mm. um, you know, embrace them and just um, continue just to do to, just to do your best and don't feel like you're a bad parent because something's gone wrong. Mm. Yeah. You're not, you know, you're, you're normal. You're in a situation which is brand new, especially if it's your first child. Mm. But just learn from it, embrace it, and just be committed to that child and, and give them all you have, yeah. um, um, which, which first and foremost is your love. Yeah, no, definitely. What advice would you give? Uh, I would say, um, you know, you can't, you can't prepare too much mm. for becoming a father but you can you can do what you can you know and um, Leandre recommended a wonderful book called Family Shepherd was mm. it Family Shepherd in yeah and I wish I read that book before stepping into the journey of fatherhood because literally that book just talks about the role of being a father mm. and has enlightened me in so many ways like I, I wish I read that prior to stepping into that journey so I would say you know speak to other fathers mm as well in addition to reading speak to other fathers find out you know how they've coped with fatherhood what are some of their challenges and see how you can learn from them i mean no child is the same mm. so you know everyone's experience is going to be different but there may be things that you may, you may be able to pick up um, from other people's experiences <laughs> another thing i would also say is remember that it takes two people to raise a child mm. Mm. it takes two people to make a child and two people to raise a child you know one person can raise a child um we know that but that's not the way god intended yeah. um but we thank god for you know the mothers and the fathers mm -hmm. who have been able to raise their kids single-handedly but ideally it takes pe two people to raise a child therefore in order to do that effectively you have to make sure that the other person is good and in a position to be able to give the best that they can mm -hmm. to your child mm -hmm. and that way it makes the the environment right and correct you know you give the best environment for your child um where the both of you can input your best into your, your child's upbringing mm. um because just just from a personal experience for me you know that didn't work out mm. and um yeah I, I i saw the effects that it had you know when my when my child was growing up you know if if you don't get that right it can kind of make things a bit difficult because remember you're both coming from two different households mm. you both have two different ideas you know mm. or, or ways of raising children so you need to be able to come together and say all right do you know what we're, we're going to do this as one we're going to we're going to do this as a unit and raise mm. our child what's the best way we can do that yeah. and if you're not able to do that you know you're not able to be there for each other support each other communicate then it makes things challenging as yeah. well so I, I understood from what you said that you know preparation i mean there's there's nine months before the baby even comes yes. mm. and and i guess there's a there's an element of you don't really know until you know the baby's in front mm. of you but during that period or during the period before that or even if the person with you you were married or whatever the case is what preparation would you say i know there's not so much you can do until the baby's in front of you yes. but what small aspects of preparation would you say that people can take before stepping into that journey I remember one of the things I was told by the pastors here um, is to like pray for your child. Mm. Mm. So like lay your hand on um, like your spouse's stomach and pray for your child daily. Mm. Um, and of course that takes discipline yeah. um, at the end of the day. So it's one of the things that I wish I was more intentional about doing, mm. um, but definitely um, praying for your child. And like Kwame said, you know, speaking to others, reading literature, um, but most importantly is supporting your partner mm -hmm. um, in terms of preparation being present in the sense of showing interest mm -hmm. in terms of okay how are you feeling today how's your morning sickness do you need me to get you anything mm -hmm. um watching those um uh what um, watching the videos the kind of like maternity mm -hmm. not maternity videos um 
or like birthing, birthing all that videos, kind of yeah. stuff. Like I can't tell you the amount of YouTube <laughs> birthing stories that, that 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 we watched. And I and I assume that none of it was the same as what you experienced. No, 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 it wasn't. But it gave you an idea yeah. of what was to come. And I think it just says to the to to your spouse that you're on it together. Because mm. I mm. think sometimes as guys. We, 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 we switch into action when the baby's here. Mm. You know what I mean? But I think our spouses want want us to know what they want to know, that actually there are two people on this journey together. Yeah. Mm. Of course, we're not going to be going through the physical pain, but actually um, actively asking questions, being a part of it, doing our own research independently yeah. and contributing to the conversation, saying, yeah. oh, it might be this because I read this and I saw this. Mm. It just shows them that actually, yeah, you know, level of engagement and yeah, commitment. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're serious about this as well. Mm. 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 Yeah, you, you've touched on some key points. And I think it's also important to, you know, have in mind what do you want your your family to look like mm. in the in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. You know, have that long-term plan, that long-term vision um, with with your, your, your wife um, so that, you know, you can work towards it mm. because there's some preparation, as you said, that's going to be required and there's some work that you're going to need to do along the journey, but it's not something that you, you know, you wake up one day and say, okay, yeah, this is what I want. Mm. For example, if you want your child to go to a particular school, let's say it's a grammar school or private education, you don't wake up, you know, when the child is, is five years old and say, okay, right, I want you to go to uh, a private school. Mm. Or you don't say, you know, when they're going to year seven, I want you to go to grammar school. There's preparation you have to do before that yes, you yes. know you might have to live in a particular area you might have to enroll your child on some extra tuition um so so those kind of things you need to start thinking about thinking ahead you know if, if you want your child to go to nursery mm. how much are nursery fees okay mm. what do i need a to lot. do <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot Too so much. do you know what what do i need to do um to put myself in the position where I can send our child or our children to nursery or actually do we need to depend on mm. our, our parents mm. for, for support, childcare support? In that case, do we need to live near them? Mm. What kind of house do we want? Mm. Uh, do we want a flat, house of a garden, that kind of thing. So mm. just thinking ahead and, and planning ahead, I think would, would make the journey easier for you, easier for your spouse and then also give your child um, the best upbringing that you possibly can. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the the physical things of buying the cots and the nappies yes, and the clothes, yeah. they're all important. Mm. But then there's also the aspect of thinking ahead. Yeah. And, and like you said, but then also touching on the on the spiritual aspect of it. it that's This is a life coming yeah, into yeah. the world and this mm. life can't pray for him or herself. Mm, exactly. So you're going to, as the father or even as the mother, you're going to need to step into that mm. gap and say, until my child understands, I'm going to, you know, do this to continue with this aspect yeah yeah there's there's a reason why you know when we were having sunday school before covid that you know pastor k used to be like these are the future leaders mm -hmm. the future scientists the future pastors and so on is because when you pray for your child and speak into your child by faith you believe that it shall come to pass yeah so so by doing that as well you know overcome some of the challenges that they're going to face they, they're going to face the challenges of the world where yeah. you know friends are telling them to do one thing they're seeing another thing on tv mm. you know especially in this generation now there's so much things that can can confuse them mm. so it's important as you're saying that we, we speak into their future you know speak into their their being into their welfare um, so that they can fulfill the potential that god has set before them yeah no definitely so this is going to be my last question <laughs> What's one piece of advice that you wish you knew before mm -hmm. stepping into this journey that, you know, you, you would want to share with other people? Just one piece of advice that you, you wish you knew before one, you stepped into the father, fatherhood one journey. Thing, one thing I wish <laughs> I knew. Um, uh, I, I would say, while you're thinking, yeah. No, I would say um, is one. knowing that fatherhood is a full-time responsibility. Mm. And I think, you know, when I was growing up, I used to see a lot of people, you know, get their child for the weekend, um, especially if they're in a situation where the parents aren't together. Um, they'd ha have their child for the weekend, and maybe that weekend, you know, they'll do all the fun things, mm. and maybe they'd even get their child to dress like them, mm. and, and that kind of thing. So growing up, in my head, I thought, okay, you know, that's what it's about. Yes. You know, you, you have your child on the weekend, you guys do fun things, and that's it. But like we said before, you know, it's... it's presence is important mm -hmm. and it's a full-time 
responsibility you have to be able to make that commitment that sacrifice in order to be there for for your child so so that's one thing i'd say to you know someone get get that in your mind as soon as you can that it's a full-time responsibility and um yeah just speak to people who are fathers already um because even me with the small experience i have i feel like it's, it's not enough mm. even like speaking on this topic i feel some kind of way car <laughs> there's people who yeah. have raised three four children mm. you know and their children are grown they're adults you know and they can they have a wealth of experience yes, that they can yes. share with us so for me you know surround yourself with people who are you know experienced in the area of fatherhood and they'll be there to guide you advise you um and, and support you through the journey mm. so what about you what's one thing you wish you knew before you sort of i think it's just the i'll echo everything kwami said but also the importance of planning in the sense of with your spouse having a very clear plan of whose responsibility is what what are we doing together who's doing night time who's doing so then everyone knows what mm. the expectation is mm. um in terms of what you're doing mm. because it's ve- it's 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 a whole new human being so you're not being. both sleeping at night when the baby's <laughs> yeah, sleeping, yeah, 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 yeah exactly so but but so beforehand so take that as an example beforehand as a family you're very much aware if baby wakes up whose responsibility is it mm. and and we've managed to now put uh i would say you know a structure in place where where, where we know that Mm. where initially at first perhaps it wasn't it wasn't like that mm. but and just keeping those lines of communication open and being honest yeah and being being honest and being vulnerable with your spouse and i think that's what is important mm. if one of you is tired and one of you is struggling don't try and be you know you know he man or he or she will want to just be like no, no i've got this i've got this no 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 no, no. be honest be open and just and because it's it, it's not easy but it's, it's beautiful and, it, and it's wonderful and it's an awesome responsibility that God um, has, has given to his children mm. to, to extend his kingdom and to, you know, disciple a young person um, mm. into the kingdom of God and to help them be a positive contributor to society. But no, that definitely would be just to kind of have that clear lines of communication um, with each other about, you know, whose responsibility is what mm. and, and, um, and have planning ahead in terms of what what you want your child um, um, to be um, mm. but without, you know, too much control. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I think you touched on a key point um, about raising them mm. to be godly children. Yes. And I think it's important to bear that in mind because that's that should be the, the aim, yeah. you know, of, of being a father, to raise up godly children. And I think it's in the book of Ephesians, um, it says that do not provoke your children to anger, yeah. but raise them up in the discipline and in instruction. Mm of the Lord. Mm. So you've got to remember that actually the children that we're raising, we're supposed to be teaching them the word, setting an example, so that as you said, they can also, you know, be a part of the kingdom and, and do what God has called them to do and be that, that salt and light mm. in the world um, that God has commanded us to be. And it's so easy to forget that. Yeah. I think we get yeah. caught up in the hype, in the, the this, in the that, of fatherhood, of parenthood, mm. but understanding that our first responsibility before changing a nappy mm. before the school they go to mm. before anything mm. is that they grow to love jesus yeah, yeah. That, that's our first responsibility yeah. and then everything else you know happens mm. from there yeah I, I remember seeing like um, when i was growing up that you know my dad he he was a bit flexible with his work so he would go to work early and then come home mm. just before we went to school and when he'd come home He'd make sure that you know we're dressed appropriately for school, uh, but he'd also make sure we've got money and then pray over us. Yeah. And at the time, I never, you know, thought as to why does he come to do that. Mm-hmm. But in essence, is to pray over his children to make sure that you know they he can teach them and yeah. be there, be present, so that you know we can be raised in the way of the Lord. Um, he'd read the scripture to us sometimes, or you know, quote a verse, make sure that we remember it, and and that was part of it you know mm. raising your children in the word of god and you, the only way you can do that is by being present mm. yeah is by no, being definitely, present definitely yeah. and, and i think there's a certain element of covering because you can't yes. lose your child 24 yes, 7 when they're yes, going yes. to school so there's a certain element of covering that you know when you do those types of things um you you at least know whilst they're walking you know they're not walking alone exactly. definitely exactly. well thank you guys for joining me today it's been lovely having you it's been a and thank yeah. you for tuning in that we hope that you were blessed by this conversation if you are on the journey to fatherhood or looking you know 
in the future to be a father we hope this conversation blessed you this is just a nice reminder just to ask you to like share and subscribe and share this link with your family and friends and that's all from us today thank you bye